So somehow we managed to survive our first season in Serie A. We've got some money to spend. We desperately need a striker. Today is all about transfers and preparing for our second Serie A campaign with Palermo FC. But before we do that, I would very much appreciate it if uh, during the course of watching this video, which I hope you enjoy, of course, if you could just uh, go down there somewhere and click the subscribe button, click the like button, and just drop a comment in. Just say hi, DP. Whatever you want. Let's get more eyes on Project Palomo and get everybody watching the best Australian content for Football Manager right here on the YouTube. Right. Enough shameless self-promotion. Project Palomo. Welcome to Project Palomo. It's your old mate DP from the DP Dome and we have finished our season. We have finished in 13th place in Syria, only 50 points off top of the league inter. So it was close. It wasn't even close. And the main reason for that is our top goal scorers were Matteo Brunori and Chiquinho, who lit up Syria with a massive six goals each. Our highest average rating was our goalkeeper. We had eight assists from Valparto. That was the best we managed. Five player of the match awards for uh, Christian Fructal, our goalkeeper. And uh, yeah, it's not great. Ninth worst in goals scored, 10th worst in goals scored. Uh, goals conceded, not exceeded, conceded. But we have £6 million to spend and probably more because we need to move some players on if we can. Uh, we're currently within our wage budget, but only just. Uh, committed spend is at 473 grand. We've got 58 grand available. We need a lot more than that. We have some work to do. And if you missed the end of the last episode, because I sneakily put the budgets on the end, uh, you didn't know that. But if you did watch to the end, you're an absolute hero and you should do that every single time. I've just hit continue here to see if any other news comes up, but not really. Batero's done well out on his loan. He's met his target. So good work on that, sir. We'll probably move him on. What we need to do is have a look at this squad because there's some real questions to be asked. Too many players averaging well below a seven. It's basically my rule. If you're an average under a seven, you've got to move on. And the only player we've got averaging over a seven is Fructal. So I'm going to have to break that rule. But really what I want to do is hang on to the youngsters with potential, move some of the older players on, players that I didn't sign and didn't necessarily want, uh, like Dichiara, even though he's been better than Sam Dahl. I'm going to move Sam Dahl on as well. The plan, essentially, for this transfer window is a very simple one. We desperately need a right back. That's a no-brainer. That needs to happen. Left back, we're probably okay, but I would like another one just to be on the safe side. And I want another striker. We need a real striker because these guys just aren't getting it done. I think I'm done with Eddie Salcedo. He spent most of this season injured. Every time he got fit and I wanted to give him a run of games in the team, he'd just get injured again. And we're paying, paying him 20 grand a week. If we look at him for this season, 25 appearances, only 10 starts, 15 off the bench for two goals, two assists, an average rating of 6.72. If you're going to play like that, you're done. And it's a similar story right around the squad. If we look at Brunori, 33 appearances in all competitions for just six goals with an average rating of 6.62. At 32 years old, with a bit of value, 30 grand a week? No, you can't be here anymore. You, you just can't stay <laughs> with my football club. Uh, Perotti is fine. Everybody else here, not good enough at left back. We need to upgrade. Uh, Vlukovic, I'll probably hang on to because he's been decent. mercandali has got a lot of potential. Ratnik has been helping us out at right back. So I'm definitely keeping him around. Nikolau, I, I don't need. Uh, Cecharoni can probably stay, but I'm not desperate for him to. Uh, Milanka will come back from his loan, but he's clearly not the guy. Uh, in midfield, uh, Ranakia, I really like. Segre, he's 30, but he can get the job done. Blin has infuriated me this season. He's probably moving on. Vasic, I'm just, I'm not sold on. He's too old now. He's not going to fulfill that potential. Uh, Marcel, we barely used him all season. He was a bit of a luxury signing, but for 10 grand a week, no, you don't get to stay here. Uh, Salcedo, as discussed, no, not for 20 grand a week. Vasic, 18 grand a week. We're paying too much. Volpato, I want to keep, but he's overpaid as well. Chiquinho showed flashes through the season. He was away a lot on international duty, which I guess is a good thing. But when he was here, he was either injured or underperforming for the most part. He needs to move on. 
Uh, Amil Saidi, I'm definitely keeping. I really like the look of him, but we need a youngster to come in and help out on the left-hand side. It's an understudy. Right wing is a problem. Uh, Volpato, I kind of want to use as the attacking mid. That's his preferred position, and that's where I want him to play. So we're going to need a right winger more than likely. But striker, we're absolutely desperate for. So we need to poke, poke around, do some scouting, have a look at the reports. But really what we're looking for is youngsters with high potential, uh, free transfers if we can swing it. But we need to clear out the dead weight. And there's no point listing anybody yet because no one's going to be buying. And who's going to want them? That's the problem. If we order this by value, uh, Sotelo... Um, who was in on loan, I th don't think we're obligated to buy him. It's an optional future fee of $5 million. I don't think we're going to hang on to him, even though he's been pretty good. But again, his average is under a seven, but he's the pick of the bunch of the defensive midfielders, so mm, maybe. But $5.5 million is a lot. If we could get him on loan again, I'd rather do that. Then we've got Volpato with high value. Chiquinho, if we could get anywhere near $5 million for him, I'd bite your arm off. Um, Perotti, I want to keep. Ranakia, I want to keep. Ratnik stays. Blin, if we could get four million for him, yes, please. Three to five million for Salcedo, that's a no-brainer. So there's some money kicking about if we can get it, even a million for Brunori. Like, definitely, I will take it. Um, if we need to do loans, I will do loans. Not a problem at all. I think Fafana uh, is moving on at the end of his loan. Yep, we're not obligated to buy him and uh, Chelsea are probably going to look to sell him. Uh, it just wasn't good enough. 6.56. Look at that. It's disgusting. So I'm not happy with the squad. The other thing I'm kicking around uh, some ideas for is changing the tactic. So what we found through most of this season is uh, when we were on and when we were playing well, we can attack. We can score goals. We, we're more than capable of it. But our strikers have let us down and we haven't capitalised on chances. Also, we found ourselves... Very, very exposed at the back. I don't think complete wing backs are the way to go. We don't really need them with wingers. What I am thinking in attack, more often than not, we're overrunning midfield. I know I just said I wanted to keep Volpato as the attacking midfielder. I'm, I'm kicking around the idea that that's not the way to go and we need someone back here as an anchor or probably a half back to drop back and support the defence a little bit more and then push forward in the attack. If he won't push forward in the attack inverted fullbacks moving up to help out and flood the midfield with numbers, which would be nice, and then have an extra body in here to try and stop the long balls over the top or stop the runners coming through. That's what I'm kicking around uh, and building a new tactic from scratch, which I don't often do. I usually just go with the preset. So this could be a bit of an adventure. Plan for today, I'm going to have a play around, spin forward a bit, See if anything interesting comes up. I'll keep you posted as I did in the last transfer window. And uh, if I do start building the tactic, I might even walk you through that process and see how it goes. But can't really do that until we know who's here and who's not. So I'm going to transfer list a whole bunch of players and let you know about the movements as we go. If we can clear everybody out, start with almost a clean slate, that would be fantastic. Right. Let's get to work. Weird timing, because we're in July now, but end of season review time. So let's have a look. Our 25-26 season with Palomo. Signing of the season, Christian Fruchtel. That is a no-brainer. Average rating, 7.03. 38 appearances. Didn't score any goals or assists, which he'll need to work on, quite frankly. Unacceptable for a goalkeeper. Everybody else was pretty freaking ordinary. So uh, my signings, not a raging success. Although Merk and Dali did show glimpses uh, at times of possibly becoming quality. Uh, Saidi chipped in with five goals, one, almost equal top scorer. Uh, Ratnik became a right back towards the end of the season and did just fine. Uh, Moscone was an absolute flop, as was Fafana, as was Estevez, as was Masal. Uh, yeah, so lots more misses than hits, unfortunately. Uh, unfortunately which we need to rectify. We finished in 13th, uh, which was our final position. They wanted us to avoid, or the board wanted us to avoid relegation from Serie A. We did so, which was fine. This run of form, though, that was horrendous. That was not a fun time. And we didn't really repeat it. A lot of draws that we, you know, we need to turn into wins. But these were mostly against the biggest clubs, Roma, 
uh, Inter, Juve. So, you know, that's going to happen. But the draws against Napoli, that was nice. Moments to remember, a 5-0 win over Reggiana. That was a fun day. Uh, a 2-0 win over AC Milan, which was madness. And goal of the season, Ranokia uh, with a worm burner or daisy cutter, as the game likes to say. 2-1 against Udinese. Shame that uh, goal of the season came in a league loss in November. But that's going to happen. A reputation, we're still national. That hasn't really changed. No new sponsorship deals. Uh, our sponsorship has gone up slightly. Broadcast revenue is up massively by 25 million, which is huge. Uh, about an extra half a million in corporate and hospitality, bit extra in prize money, and some more match day and commercial retail. 2.83 million in merch sales. Brunori selling more shirts than anybody else. We sold 18,000, so I hope you've all got your Palomo shirts. You should. I'm not selling Palomo shirts, but you can buy them from Palomo. You should do so. Support the club. I need all your money because they're only owned by the CD group who have billions and billions and billions of pounds. There's your team of the season, which leaves a hell of a lot to be desired. And this is why we need a really good transfer window because this squad just is not good enough. Marcel, who only started five games all season in on the right wing. Valpardo's made it. Saidi's made it. Segre Ranakia. So justified in saying, I want to keep Ranakia and bin off Blin. Uh, Dahl on the left, which is surprising because I thought Dichiara was better all season, but he's not good enough. Uh, Valu uh, Valukowicz or Valu. Uh, I want to keep Ciccaroni, I'll probably keep Amparozzi, um, who kept us afloat in a lot of games and scored some really important goals at times as well from the right-hand side. And Brunori was just useless up front. Six goals all season. Not good enough. Not good enough at all. In terms of accolades, nothing for me. Not even a Manager of the Month award, which is understandable because we were abysmal. Uh, Christian Fructal, Fans Player of the Season, Young Player of the Season was Valpato. Uh, Fritjo was signing of the season, which we already knew. Ranaki got goal of the season. Top goal scorer was Benori, which is a joke. Valpato with the most assists with eight, which is promising. Most played of the match awards was Fritjo. Also the highest average rating with just a seven. And uh, some record breakers. Valpato with eight is a new record. Uh, Fritjo with 10. But I mean, all these records are Syria records or in a season. We've only been here two seasons. So who really cares? Uh, most league goals by a play, though, Matteo Brunori with 84. We need a striker who can get like half of that next season. And that is our main mission. It was successful, but it wasn't awesomely successful. There's our manager timeline. If you want to have a look at that, uh, tough because nobody cares about dynamic timeline. What a waste of time that is. We've got 2.4 million for achieving 13th place in Serie A which is nice. We've got some players in, inducted into the overall best 11, which includes Merck and Dali. Three of them are in, which is nice. Uh, Merck and Dali's in, Sam Dahl and Mos Mosconi. Why? This guy's made our all-time best 11 with an average of 6.62, one goal, one assist from 23 games. Ridiculous. There's a season review. Collective bonus played out to the squad, and it really doesn't change a hell of a lot. We have transfer listed some players. I've upset Blin. Uh, he's going to be a grumpy bum. Uh, Chiquinho, we've had an offer for from Ipswich. I can show you all this because it's actually happening. So we've got an offer for Blin. Uh, let me have a look here. Uh, over a million for each one. Almost two million from Brest. 1.7 from Clermont. Uh, 1.9 from Angleur. And Auger are offering 1.8. And I've said they need to match some of the higher offers if they want to have a look in. And uh, uh, 1.7 million for Chiquinho, going up to 2.8 potentially, uh, depending on add-ons and things like that. So with that, could be an extra 3 million in the kitty and saving 50 grand in wage, which is huge just for those two players. Uh, other players who are listed, Brunori, I have listed. He's got some interest uh, coming from Cremonisi. Uh, Chiquinho, we've already seen. De Chiara got some interest from Serie B teams, which is about his level, I suspect. Hellas Verona wants Sam Dahl. Fair enough. Uh, Vasic is wanted by Hellas Verona as well. Uh, and I think that's it for everybody that I listed. Uh, I'm just having a quick scan through. Yeah, you're all up to date. Uh, someone wants Mac and Dali. Lecce want him. They can't have him. He's great. I'm keeping him. He's mine. So uh, we'll spin on and I'll let you know if we sign uh, sign any of those players. We're not going to sign them. We're trying to sell them. I'll let you know if anyone goes. 
and then we'll start doing some wheel and dealing. Right, so little bit of news. Uh, Chiquinho has been granted a work permit. He is off to Ipswich for 2.3 million, which I don't think is a bad piece of business. Uh, we brought him in on a free transfer last summer. He came in, 25 appearances, six goals, two assists, 6.78. Not good enough. Didn't want him. And we turned a tidy little profit on Chiquinho. So he's out of here, 2.6 million in the kit. He's got a value of 2.8. Nothing wrong with that. That is pretty darn good. And also, Mr. Blinn is off for 1.9 million, 30-year-old defensive midfielder. Uh, again, very frustrating uh, all through the season. Red cards, yellow cards, always suspended or injured. Just annoying. He should have been great. He just he just wasn't. So 1.9 million. Uh, he was brought in for, I can't even see there. Must have been 850 grand or something, but that's not us. That was Lecce. So maybe on a free. No idea. Don't know what he costs, but 2 million. Tidy little profit for him as well. That means we've got 8.2 million pounds in the kitty for our spending pleasure and uh, about 100 grand spare of wage budget. So as a result, I've started doing some business, hopefully. Uh, a four million pound transfer for Alan Maturo. I've put three million of that on installments so we can keep some money in the bank. The idea with Alan Maturo, who would come in from Genoa, who I know have been pants for a long time, but this guy looks all right. So he's under 22, which is great. He's a decent Serie A player. He doesn't want a butt ton of money. I think his uh, wage is like 16 grand a week or something like that. He's got Italian second nationality, which is nice. Uh, matches all the objection, uh, uh, objections, objectives, good in the air, and would be uh, not only our best centre-back, but it was not coming in to play centre-back, he's coming in to play left-back, he'd be better than Dahl, better than Ceccaroni, the scouts like him, I like the look of him, um, and, and you know, not too much he'll need to do, my computer's singing at me, which is annoying, also he'd be playing inverted fullback, and he's got decent stats in all those numbers, plus 22, room to improve, we can train him up on agility and get everything we want, into the yellow and that will fit nicely into this tactic which I'm playing with obviously all the players red because they're away on holiday that's where he would live Matari there as the inverted wing back and then we'd have an inverted full back potentially on the other side but I think it's only marked as that because that's what Ratnik would play but that's kind of the plan is to have that midfielder as a halfback or the DM as a halfback um, more attacking minded players who can help out in defense in front of that couple of wingers and a striker, much better striker required. Haven't started shopping for one yet, just waiting to see. But really, um, I'm actually pretty happy uh, having Ratnik on the right-hand side. Um, we do probably need another backup, though, because I'm not sure who else we've got here. Oh, Perotti is, is fine, and he can also play on the left-hand side, which would help us out. But... We've got a left back, so Perotti sort of drops into being a backup for us, I think. Uh, we haven't had any offers for Dahl yet or any of the other players, sadly, but I'm working on it. We'll keep offering them out. But that's the update. Things are happening. We'll check back in shortly uh, when there's some more stuff to rep report. But so far, so good. Bunch of money to spend. Yay. So, slight issue identified because I forgot about something we encountered last summer with squad registration, we don't have enough players at the club who were trained at Palermo for three years. So I've had to put in, or I didn't have to put in an offer, but I have, uh, and we've done some other business, hopefully. So Antonio Gallo, remember him? We were looking at him last summer for a long time, and we we're going to pay a disgusting transfer fee of over 10 million for him. Uh, it looks like we can get him a bit cheaper this time. We're still paying over the odds, but we need this guy primarily because he was trained at Palermo, which means it basically opens up a spare squad spot for us, which would be great. He's a fantastic left back. Uh, he's been playing in and around Serie A and Serie B for a long time. He had a good season with Lecce. He's been there for ages and getting the job done. Can't be any worse than what we've got, but he's got a good star rating. If you have a look at his profile, he's got a lot of yellow numbers. He's a fullback. He can play the role we need him to as an inverted wing back. And hopefully we can just train him up to play there. He's only 27, so he's got years ahead of him. And I think that would be a good piece of business. We're looking at 8 million in, or 9 million in total for him and 34 grand a week. 
uh, which is probably fine. It's going to take us over the wage budget, but there's some other stuff going on. Uh, the other guy is Michel Nderi Adopu, who is a defensive midfielder and central mid, so he can help out Branikia. He can help out Segre in the midfield. Uh, he's got good ratings in all the right areas. He can play halfback, which is what I want in that defensive midfield role and he can do all of that well he's six foot two and he looks decent like his ratings aren't huge for uh, Atalanta but they've been doing better than us for a, a long time he's also played uh, at Vito Bese, uh way down in the leagues in Torino uh, Cagliari went out on loan so you know he's got a bit about him and I think he can help us out so that would be great in terms of moving out uh, we might be getting rid of the splanches which takes a few grand off the wage budget, but we've also had some offers for Eddie Salcedo, finally, 1.8 million, which will help us out and get his wage off the bill, which is 20 grand. So that basically plays for Gallo's wages. And then we need to move some other players out. We've had offers for Brunori. Uh, we've had offers for Dahl. Uh, I've also had to remove Dichiara from the transfer list because he's the other player we've got who uh, was trained at Palomo and counts towards that total so uh we need to keep him around even if he's not going to play which is a bit annoying but that's fine we can't generate any interest in Vasic whatsoever there's a bit of interest in Marsal um and Palmer are talking about a transfer for him but he get to come in with a bid uh we've got a couple of clubs uh Criminesi, Venezia, Hellas Verona who are all getting relegated who are in for Dahl he might be sticking around at this rate because nobody wants to buy him and uh, Ciccaroni turned down the opportunity to leave, which is a little bit frustrating. So we're struggling to move out the players that I need to have leave. The only club in for Brunori is Monza. And uh, I don't know that we're going to be able to get the 2 million for him, which is a little bit frustrating. But we're working on it and we're trying. Uh, good value for Ranakia, but I'll definitely want to keep him around if at all possible. And no sign of a striker yet, which is a bit alarming. Uh, we may be stuck with Brunori. But again, we're working on it. Volpato, by the way, has been at the World Cup uh, scoring goals, which is nice. Uh, three matches at the World Cup, three goals, seven average rating. He's had a couple of shockers as well, but overall he's doing well. He's developing. He's got arrows going up. I like it. Back to work. Well, a couple of deals confirmed. Antonio Gallo is in $9 million in total uh, transfer fee. Uh, he's got a relegation release clause of $8 million, which should get him snucked up and should help us do some shopping. Should we go down? We're not going to go down. We're going to be awesome. Thirty-four grand a week. So, uh, and fulfills the squad registration problem. We've still got two slots we need to fill and we just don't have the players. So, And everybody else who we could sign, who was trained here, is garbage. Not going to happen. We've also brought in uh, Michelle Nderi Adopo, who's going to need a nickname because I'm not saying uh, that every time I'm calling a match. Uh, but yeah, we're good to go. We also put in an offer for Brook Norton Coffee, uh, or Coffee, I should say, of 3.1 million, but the contract he wanted was nuts and we can't afford it. So that's where we're at. Uh, we've got four million pounds in the kitty. Uh, we are just below our wage budget and there's a few other deals on the go in terms of players moving out. So again, Desplanches is still sitting there. We're not getting any money for him, but it'll get his wages off the bill or 1.6k of it. Mm, not really worth it. And then Marcel, who we brought in on a free transfer uh, last season and barely used like 20 games uh, all up, only five starts, 15 off the bench, one assist in terms of product. Mm, not ideal. Uh, but we've had a, a couple of bids in, and uh, the latest one is from Estoril Praia. Uh, it's only 800 grand up front, 1.5 million in total with add ons and blah, 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 blah. But that will help. Bit more money on top, a uh, bit of wage budget cleared because we've been paying them 11 grand to do nothing. So progress there. We've set up a whole bunch of recruitment focuses to try and fill spots in our brand spanking new tactic. And so far, it's not going well. Um, but in terms of offers in, that's just a scout. So, yeah. Uh, we're looking for loans to help us out. We desperately need a striker, though, and potentially a right back. So, fill you in in a little bit. That's where we're at. Things are moving. Well, here's a signing I wasn't expecting to make, but he popped up available on a free transfer, and I thought, why the hell not? We've got one Australian on the team. Let's grab 
Garang Kuol, 23 grand a week or 23 and a half. He can play on the wing. He can play up front. He's only 22. He could still improve. He's going to be a decent backup. He's not coming in as a, a star player or anything crazy, just a regular starter. So he can come in and do a job. If you don't know who Garang Kuol is, he was one of the hottest prospects uh, from Australia a couple of years back. Um, nearly scored an equaliser against Argentina at the World Cup not too long ago in the real world. He's played 10 games for Newcastle, scored one goal. Uh, he hasn't set the world on fire since uh, he was back in the A-League and didn't do great at the World Cup either. But neither did Australia. They got knocked out uh, at the first, uh, first hurdle thingy, group stage, whatever you call it. But I think that's a decent piece of business. 700 grand Newcastle paid for him. We've got him for nothing. And he can help us out. So, yeah, I'm all for it. Uh, Cremonese have just come in with an offer for Chakaroni of £2 million. I would absolutely like your money. Thank you very much. If we can move him on, that would be great. Still can't get anyone to buy it for Brunori again. Uh, Monza are interested, but they're just not going to pay it. His wages are too high. And Dahl, yeah, he was a misstep because nobody's coming in for him now after he turned down. Hellas Verona which is really, really annoying. Raheem Sterling's at Inter. There you go. There's some rule changes that I'm not going to worry about because, you know, it'll be funnier if they bite me on the bum later <laughs> on. Three non-EU players, British players, blah, blah, blah. Yep, that's all fine. Season expectations. Reach the first round of Copa Italia. Sure, we can squeeze out a bit more money, but it's not worth it. They just want us to avoid relegation. Again, I can deal with that as an expectation. And the board would like a meeting to discuss improving the standard of youth coaching. Well, I've asked about that a couple of times and you've said no. So uh, what's uh, Sheikh Mansour got to say for himself? We are looking into improving the club's youth coaching and wanted to know if you had any opinions on our proposal. I think that's a great idea. Sheikh Mansour, fill your boots. I'm glad he asked my opinion. You're, the, you're a sheikh. You can do whatever you want, mate. You own the club. It's like entirely up to you. Uh, and the junior coaching budget has been increased. So uh, there's been a few other improvements as well that I'm pretty sure I've forgotten to speak about. We've had our training facilities upgraded. They're now excellent. Our youth facilities are great. We've got good academy coaching, good youth recruitment. Budgets have been improved. It's all looking pretty sweet. I did realize we're paying 300 grand a year to rent our stadium. We don't own our own ground, which is a bit disappointing. We've got 14 million in the bank, thanks to my awesomeness in terms of transfer business. Uh, and in terms of everything else that's going on, uh, if we can move Chakaroni on, myself still hasn't signed his deal. And the longer that this goes on, mm, the more I'm thinking it's, uh, it's less likely. We are over the wage budget as things stand by about 40 grand. So those two plays going, uh, will help minimize that. And yeah, I think we're just looking for loans, but if we have a look at the squad planner now, we've got some options up front. Uh, Brunor is not going to be it. Um, we need to get rid of him. So another striker probably on loan is going to be our best bet unless we can get these other players moved out. On the right-hand side, we're looking good. On the left-hand side, we're looking okay. I'd like a bit more depth there. And on the right-hand side, we're still in trouble. So right back and striker, number one and two priorities, I think. And right back is probably more important. If we can get ourselves into a position where we're more likely to defend well, and, uh, and keep some clean sheets, that would be delicious. So I shall press on. But Garen Kuel is in. Good times. And we have now reached the 1st of July. If you look at the scout reports, this is part of the problem. Uh, <laughs> no idea what position these guys play, but 12 million, 15, 12 million, 37 million. We don't have that money. Like these things are just not on the cards. If this guy was available for loan, absolutely. But... Not a thing. We've got a bunch of loans that are finished. Players going back to where they came from, which is fine. Moscone, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> just, just no. Although, I mean, he is high potential. He's only 20. And uh, oh, no, he, he was a flop. Uh, I've offered, uh, I haven't offered Ranakia out. I don't want him to go. So that deal can sod off. Uh, transfer windows open. We're not going to answer those questions. And who have we been linked with? Michelle Borgoni. Uh, he looks worth a scout. 
We'll have a look at him. He's got some good numbers there. Who else have we got? Matteo Fiorenza. Uh, what do you look like? You're a goalkeeper. All right, we'll scout you, but you're too old. Uh, Marco Bernasconi is a 16-year-old. We'll have a bit of that. And Ricardo Volpi is someone I thought I'd heard of, but I'd just seen the name somewhere else, probably. We'll give him a scout and see if we can bring in some youngsters. But the sort of money that's being thrown around, potential £75 million deal. Like, we can't compete with that. If we have a look at the situation in the league in Syria and look at things like, how do we do this? Sponsorship income. Uh, where are we? Where are are uh, we down the bottom somewhere 15 6.5 million inter on 127 million so we've got a ways to go before we can compete for champions league spaces uh to do the right back situation now the players are back from loan is shaping up the striker situation still not ideal by any stretch of the imagination so uh, you know same old say uh, we do need a goalkeeper yikes uh because our loanee has now gone back home he's got an itchy head gonna scratch it uh so i've got to add goalkeeper trusty pencil to my to-do list because we desperately need a backup now that the has gone we'll press on this window is taking forever this is hard work right so we've had some transfer business get uh completed the splanches is gone we've got a b plus for that transfer uh marcel going they're not happy about it c minus for him but we never used him so i don't know what people are complaining about our, our signings have been pretty successful i think antonio gallo we get a b4 uh maturo we get a b minus uh Nderi dopo gets a b minus uh and three and a half stars three and a half stars for gallo as well and two and a half stars for Kowal has the potential to be a key player for the club we'll send them on intensive language courses uh, Palmer have signed Alexis Blinn. We get a D for that, but that's fair. Uh, do you know I have signed Eddie Salcedo? They're not sure why such a good player was sold because he was always injured. That's why £13 million spent so far. Standard have made a loan approach for Demetrius Nicolau. Uh, no future fee involved there and only 20% of his wage, which doesn't really do a lot for us. Can we squeeze... I mean, mm. do, 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 who's interested? Everyone's interested in the loan. I mean, pay all of his wage. Yeah, I thought so. Uh, loan offers for Rota. Uh, we'll take those because I'm not going to use him. That's fine. Palmer have made an offer for Ranokia, which is just not enough. Four million. He's not interested either. What a good lad. Line approach for Sazi, nobody cares. Raffaele, nobody cares. And Divinoza has left his agent. So where that leaves us in terms of squad, we need a goalkeeper. I have put an offer in for one and we're negotiating a contract right now, which is Andreas Jungdahl, who we've looked at a few times. He can come in as a backup. It'd be absolutely fine. Nothing wrong with that. And it's a pretty cheap deal. 200 grand for a backup goalkeeper. Absolute bargain. Moving out. Uh, potentially Chakaroni at 2 million rota and I think we will offer out uh is he back Nicolau where are you hiding I think he's at the World Cup if we remove that uh Renzo Malenka Demetrius Nicolau want loan we'll offer him out I don't know what he's worth transfer offer via transfer room and just list him because we're not going to use him boom so business is done still Desperately need a striker and possibly some wingers. Some movement at the station. It's not ideal by any stretch, but uh, an offer for Chakaroni of 2 million, which we've already discussed, I think, with Cromenici. Hopefully he's on his way out. Demetrius Nicolau, we've had some offers in for him uh, up to about a million uh, or just over. So that's promising. Uh, Rhoda, we already talked about. And finally, an offer from Brunori, which is shortchanging us. Frankly, it's a bit cheeky from Monza, but I'm taking it. 600 grand up front, uh, 400 grand on installments and add-ons. Uh, I'll take it. We just need him out and to clear his uh, wages off the bill. That'll clear 74 grand if all these deals play out. And we're 48 grand over now. And it's impacting our ability to make other signings, which obviously 
is an issue because we need some more players. Uh, but yeah, I'll keep you posted if any of those guys move on. It is a done deal. It's a bit of a sad day, but Matteo Brunori, once again, with me at the helm, has left Palermo. A million pounds is what we got for him. Um, mm, not the, the best deal I've ever done. Not the best deal at all. Uh, but he has gone. He was at Plamo for a number of years, was banging in the goals, but he just could not make the step up to Syria. Not good enough with a 6.62, 10 goal contributions ac across 33 matches. No, no, not going to cut it. Uh, the press are going to ask me about it. Nope, they're not even asking me about it. They don't care. So that means... We are back to needing a striker, but the rest of the squad is looking pretty good. Uh, so Fructu, we've got Young Dahl. Young Dahl is in uh, as the backup goalkeeper. That's not bad. We've got cover at left back. Gallo is going to be the first choice over there, and it's been recommended that he be made captain. So that's interesting. Uh, Walukowicz, Merkandali, uh, Cekaroni still knocking about the place, but we've got Ratnik as well. Uh, Malanka is back from his loan and could probably be handy. Maturo is in. He'll be the backup left back, but we might move him up the pecking order just a little bit uh, for centre back, which I told him he wasn't really going to play, but I made a liar of myself there, haven't I? Uh, Perotti, Ratnik, Carasoni, a bunch of players can help us out at right back. Pataro is still here. We're trying to move him out on loan defensive midfield i think we're good midfield i think we're good we've got some good options although we're trying to get zukon out and vasic isn't good enough so we could probably do with an, another body in the mix here uh on the left wing uh saidi volpato vasic who we're looking to move on uh garen Kowal can help out on that side uh on the right hand side of is probably leaving uh sooner as much as i wanted to keep him around mm -mm. So we could probably deal with another winger, truth be told. And we definitely now need a striker because we don't really have a dedicated one. So there's still work to do here and lots of it. I'll just keep going. But uh, we're about to start pre-season and we don't have a goal scoring threat. What's the worst that could happen? Okay, so hear me out. <laughs> I've gone in for Moscone. And I know it's stupid and I know it's mad because last season, that's what he did. 23 games, one goal, one assist, 6.62. But he is young. He's only 20 years old. He's got 16 pace. Look at him as a striker. There's no reason why he can't perform. And he was only really ever a bit player because I was desperate to get a performance out of Brunori. We're looking at 400-ish grand to bring this guy in, which is a bargain, and his potential is huge. Can be three and a half, four and a half star potential, can improve his crosses, a whole bunch of stuff, but he's under 22, so he doesn't hurt. He's professional, fits all the objectives from the club. He's not going to break the bank. If he comes in, and there's a lot of other clubs in for him, and he was winning awards last season, which again, was baffling, but... Uh, we've got bids from Brescia, Genoa, Sampdoria, like so many clubs looking at Moscone. Plays advanced forward, which is what I want him to do. He's only five foot ten, but he's got pace and he, he could still improve. He's got another three years before he maxes out. If we can train him well, he could be a thing. Some more transfer business completed. If we have a look at our transfer history since the 1st of July, these are the players we brought in. Adopo, Kuo, Maturo, Gallo, Yongdal. Uh, players have moved out. We know about Marcel, Desplanches, Blin, Salcedo, uh, a bunch of youngins, Brunori, <laughs> Nicolau. Uh, Awusu has gone. He's gone to San Etienne. Uh, Carasoni has gone to Brescia. And uh, Zukon has gone out on loan for not a lot of money in terms of what else is happening uh, around the parts. Chakaroni, that deal still hasn't been completed. A youngster with a great name, Matthew Booty, um, might be going out on loan. Markovic and Grilau. Remember Grilau? I signed him. Got no intention of using him, like ever. He's rubbish. Uh, getting a bit of money for him. Fair enough. Not going to argue. And this guy, Giorgetti, is a youngster. Never going to be good enough. Get some cash in for him. No drama. We're not talking big money, but meh, what are you going to do? In terms of the ins, uh, staff, just a, a loan manager, potentially. Some of these are interesting. So this guy, Adrian Benedicic, 
Bit of D-Chak, not sure. He's a striker. He can play in the left wing as well. Probably another Chiquinho, potentially. He's 26. Wants a lot of money. He's not wanted by Palmer, uh, but might be coming in to us. And, you know, he, he looks fine. He's played in Serie A, though, and he scored more goals than Brunori. So, positive signs. Uh, Moscone, we already know about. If he comes in, brilliant. If he doesn't, I'm not that fast because I've just put in a bid for someone our scouts found whose name is Evandro, just the one name, like Sher or Madonna. Uh, he's got 16 pace, 15 finishing. He's only five foot eight, uh, but 15 technique. Like this guy, this guy could be something a little bit special. 15 flair, 20 determination, good decision making, composure, anticipation, off the ball. Can't pass worth a toffee, but he could be something a little bit special. And he's Brazilian. So, you know, you've got to you've got to love a Brazilian. From Palmeiras for 250 grand. That is all. He wants to be a star player. Moscone wants to be a star player. And uh Benedicak wants to be a star player as well. Everybody wants to be a star player. The other thing with Benedicak is it's gonna cost us a fortune. <laughs> 160 grand a month plus 24 grand in wages and a 1.9 million mandatory future fee plus 1.8 million on installments now that i'm looking at this deal i'm thinking oh, do i really want to do that or could we do better for less money he is quality though so i'm going to have a poke around for another winger because i don't want to use him as a striker it'll be one of these youngsters he would be handy, but that's a lot of money, and I don't like play, paying stupid loan fees. And it's a big wage when he comes in, too. It's like 40 grand or something, which wipes all of that out. These guys are cheaper and could probably do the job, so not sure. But we're getting there. It's taking shape. We just probably need a left winger, maybe another backup goalkeeper. Still need a striker. One of these guys should come in, and we'll go from there. Now, this is a signing I'm excited about. We have Evandro for £250,000, not million. Squad player, could improve a lot. We'll ask Segre to welcome him in. But I'm quite excited about this one. We only get a C plus for it. Fingers crossed he scores some goals and proves to be worthwhile. I agree. But minimum fee release clause of £11 million. Like, there's something about this guy. There's got to be. And he's got to be good. He's already three stars. He can play advanced forward. Right now, he is our best option <laughs> as a striker. And I'm okay with it. He's Brazilian. He's young. Yep, I don't have a problem with this deal at all. He needs a rest. I'm going to send him on holiday. Uh, training, rest, uh, training intensity, send on holiday. Uh, he's going to miss most of his preseason. But you know what? Just go on holiday for two weeks. It's fine. It'll be fine. But there we go. Finally got a striker. Uh, we put some other offers out as well for bodies. Uh, so this guy, Saba Hordal, I believe this deal is currently being negotiated. So we'll have a look at that in a second. Uh, Evandre's off on leave. Uh, it's a team to play friendly. Medina have gone in for Moscone now, which I'm less worried about. I'm going to reject that loan offer for Vasic because I've decided I'm going to keep him. They want 1.3 million, two point. Yes, I accept those demands. He's a young winger. He's got potential. He can fill one of those spots eventually if we can hang on to him. We're moving Galore out. I'll give you another look at this guy. Saba Hodal is from Inter. Uh, he's two-star current ability at the moment. He can play on both wings and he can help out up front if need be. Again, everything in yellow where you'd want it to be. He's not quite mental enough to have a love heart shape or attacking enough, but we can work on that. He's only 18 years old. He's played a game in Serie A for Inter. Uh, he got a 7.23 last season, 25 goals in 51 appearances for the youth team. And he looks the business. I think he'd be fine. I think he would be absolutely fine as a backup, which is what he'd be coming in as. And yeah, they're negotiating the deal. We'll see if we can get it over the line, but that'll solve the winger problem. Uh, because at the moment, Kowal and Valpato and Saidi are going to have to play everywhere. He doesn't want to sign for us. I hated that guy. Saba Hedal was never an option. And I don't know what you're talking about. Lum Chuana. Chuana? Chauna? I'm not sure. I'll put in a loan offer for this. Was it a loan or a transfer? A loan 
uh, a loan offer for this guy pretty cheap and can cover the wings so that would be nice and then a transfer offer for this guy Kasper Obanski uh, about 3 million in total 1.5 million up front we can't afford it which is nice uh, it's cheaper than the loan fee for this guy um, but look at all the positions he can play that we use uh, not great for striker but he could absolutely do it with all that yellow can play on the wing like he's suitable in all those positions on the left he's suitable in all those positions in midfield he can do all of that as a dm he can do all of that there is nothing wrong at all with this player except he can't jump other than that uh, he can't hit the ball either or mark much or tackle very well but this guy could be really really handy and i'm a bit excited by having just a a, a swiss army knife for midfield and the attacking positions Anywhere he's weak, we can train him up. He's only 22 and could be very, very handy indeed. So that one is a little bit exciting. And if either of them come through before this clown, uh, Adrian Benedicak, then I'll cancel that deal. I'm tempted to just cancel it anyway, to be honest, because he's very, very expensive. Plus, it includes a commitment to buy the guy. If you have a look at it, mandatory future fee of 1.9. You know what? That settles it because the other two are way, way cheaper. We're pulling out as good as he'd be. No, he's too expensive. Just way too expensive. And even if all of these guys come in, including Moscone, it's still only 42 grand worth of wages. We'd still have wage budget left over and we'd still have 2 million in the bank, which is what we ended last season with. That would be a healthy piece of business. The only downside is we have a tiny, tiny squad. So uh, there we go. Oh, brilliant. Uh, Luum Chauna is coming in. Boom. We are paying a monthly fee and all that kind of bizzo. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of a dent that's going to put in the, the budget, but he'll be useful. So I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with that maneuver. An extra body to throw at the squad. We'll welcome him in. Thank you very much. We'll give him a squad number. Auto number everybody. Some of them are properly changed. I never pay attention to it. And from there, we'll go back to squad registration, hit auto select, and we've got another player in the squad. Lovely, lovely, lovely. But as you can see, we've only got 19 players registered, which is not ideal. Quick update. We didn't get Moscone because we treated him like trash when he was here. So he's off to Medina, who are uh, in Syria as well. So he'll get game time and he'll play there. Don't care because we've got Evandro and he's going to be great and better than him anyway. So meh, 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 meh. And just like that, on the 25th of July, another player in, Kasper Obanski is in. Squad player could still improve. It could be a good Serie A player. We'll ask Fructil to welcome him in and we'll get him added to the squad once he's got a squad number. That's all submitted. Lovely stuff. Squad registration, auto select, done. Look at that. 21 players in the squad now. Oh, very exciting. Fancy. And add him to the training camp squad. Uh, training cramp. I hope they're not all getting cramp, but he's in the training camp squad. Oh, my goodness. Where's his heart? Anyway, another player. And I'm excited about this one because, as I said, he is a Swiss army knife. Unfortunately, he's Polish. So that analogy doesn't really work. The money's getting a bit tight. We're plowing through preseason. Our tactical familiarity with the new tactic is pants. And I've gone back in for Patrick Catrone, who we've looked at before. Uh, the doffer went in for him. I nixed the deal. But he's got a love heart. So, yeah, I can help him out. We can help him out playing some football. And he only wants to be a regular starter. He doesn't want to be an important player or anything else. So he'd be there as the backup behind Evandro and possibly QL as the other backup as well. But he's a support striker. That's his job. He'll come off the bench uh, and hopefully make an impact. He's never scored a ton of goals. 47 goals in his career out of 241 games isn't a fantastic return. But as a backup, I think he'd be fine. And that's the only business we've got going on. Uh, in other news, Samuel Dahl. Uh, Samuel Dahl has gone out on loan. Uh, for a loan fee. So we're getting some money in for him, which is nice. Uh, and this guy is the the young goalkeeper that the Doffer wanted to buy. And he actually looks decent. Two and a half, four and a half star potential, maybe. I've seen worse. So that's all looking pretty good. The squad planner is in a much better state. We have some numbers up here for strikers. We could still do with another one, hence that offer. 
uh, that would be delightful. Oh, Chewina can help out up there as well. So goalkeepers, I think we're fine between Fructu and Jungdahl. They can get a job done. There, left back, Gallo, Perotti, Maturo, and Dicciara. Nothing wrong with that. Dicciara's only here because he was trained at Palermo. So we need to have that spot available. Uh, at centre back, we've got Walu, we've got Merkandali, Ratnik, Maturo, uh, Milanko. He's out on loan. I'm not sure when he comes back. Uh, do, do, do. Let me have a look at his contract. So the loan ends in December. And then he'll be back. So that's some extra cover. And I'm happy to have him here. And Bataro is still knocking about because we couldn't move him on. And I'm fine with that. And then at right back, Perotzi, Ratnik, Bataro, Malanka. That's cool. Perotzi's first choice, obviously. Ratnik is the backup uh, playing inverted fullback, which is one of his preferred roles. He can do it, Bataro. Fill in there. It'll be fine in an emergency. Only in an emergency. And then DM, Renoki can play there. Volokovic, Adopo is probably first choice. Uh, it's playing that role at this stage. Uh, Segre, who's just picked up an injury, he's out for five weeks, which is not ideal. And then we've got Ratnik and Urbanski can help out in midfield proper. Uh, at least it's the Mazala, because we'll have a Mazala now. Renakia, Segre, Adopo, but same sort of bodies. And Vasic can help out in that position as well. And then same players, but as an advanced playmaker on the right-hand side of midfield. On the wing, Saidi, Kuol, Vasic, Volpato, Chauno, Urbiensky, uh, Volpato, Kuol, same bodies. And then up front is where we're like. Evandro, first choice at this stage. Uh, Kuol, uh, this guy is down in the youth team and will never see the light of day, just quietly. But yeah, that's what we've made the offer for the other striker. So it's getting there, but it is very small. We get 15 spots on the bench. We're not going to be happy to fill a bench with this squad. And I'm not going to go out and buy a bunch of rubbish just for the sake of it. But we might have a look at some free transfers and see if we can just get some cheap extra cover in. Uh, next up in the friendlies, we're going to play Dortmund. I had to arrange the friendlies because everybody knocked us back. But we've won everything we played so far. We just rolled uh, Grutte Firth 3-0 with a goal for QO, Radakia and Chauna, which is very cool. A couple more to go. And then we kick off Copa Italia with Vicenza. We'll probably play the Copa Italia in this episode. It is going to be a long one. It's a transfer special. Uh, I do think what I want to do is go with... A shorter pitch. We've got the shortest we can do now. So, hmm. All right, we'll stick with that. I like it shorter. Although maybe that's what's costing us in terms of the balls over the top. Anyway, I'm going to press on. But we're getting close to the start of the season. Training camp's going well. One more play to bring in and then free transfers. I've just cancelled the Catrone deal, which might be really dumb. But... Uh, a couple more things in the works. So Alicia Owusu has been showing up on the scout reports for ages. He's 29 years old. He's Ghanaian. He's got a ton of stamina. He's a defensive midfielder. He can play as the halfback that I want. Might be able to help out in defensive mid or straight up midfield in a pinch. Just that injury to Segre made me think we could probably do with another midfielder just in case, especially if at some point Volpato or Siaidi get injured and we've got to push the other two new boys further forward so just a bit more backup and some help in defense if someone gets a red card or something stupid and we've run out of substitution so there's that this guy gift shikane i have been chasing since last summer he came up on the next gen list as one of the best young prospects in the world he's playing for sundowns in south africa he's 18 years old now he was 17 when this saga started every time sundowns uh, accepted an offer of just 450 grand for this guy. He refused to discuss terms. I put in a cheeky bid just to see what was what and repeat the process. But he was willing to talk turkey for once. As you can see, he's got green numbers for pace, agility, high acceleration, natural fitness, uh, crossing dribbling. He can't shoot for, for peanuts, but he's got good technique. He's got good flair. This guy could be something special and he's a left footer. So he can play up front. It's not his forte, but he can do it. But on the wings, he could be very handy. We're not worried about attacking midfield. But as a backup winger, I know he's only 18, but poor. Plus, he get a huge pay rise based on the, the contract we've offered him. Only eight grand. That's all he wanted. And Owusu only wants 17. So we'd be within our wage budget. And we wouldn't be paying 1.9 million pounds for a 29-year-old striker. 
This could be super dumb, but remember, we didn't score a lot of goals last season when we did. The wingers were just as effective as the strikers. And if we can get performances out of this team, get them learning this new system, get it working and be a little bit more solid at the back. And I know we haven't really upgraded the defense, but we've got some extra players in. That's got to help, right? But with us, hopefully, uh, I mean, we just played Borussia Dortmund, who were way above our level, and we only lost 1-0. That is not awful. I just want to have a look at our player ratings for it. I mean, obviously, they're not fantastic. But the defense was decent. The center backs, it, it's not ideal. But we were never in the match. We were never going to be against Dortmund. 1.6G, they scored less than their XG. So we defended well in that game. That's a positive, And that's what we're after, that more secure shape. And it seems to be working. To talk you through the tactic really quickly, um, it's basically a control possession, 4-3-3, with a halfback, again, with the idea of that dropping back down in here. Wingers creating all the attack, the inverted wingbacks pushing up in attack to support these midfielders and just create numbers, a, a numerical advantage, as the kids say, with the striker there as the advance forward, looking to bang in all the goals. I'm not 100% sure on that role, but I know Evandro can do it, and I think he's going to be good, and I hope he's going to be good. I'd love to bring in another Brazilian to help him settle. Uh, we'd we'd always love another Brazilian, but they're not cheap. I did have a look at Danny Ceballos, uh, but he wanted 150 grand a week. <laughs> so, no. I think we're just about done, though. There's not uh, only these two deals, and once they're confirmed, I think I'm happy with the squad. And we're ready to start the season. We'll have enough money left that we can reevaluate in January. So right now, all I want to do is what we did last season as a bit of a surprise. No idea how long this episode is going to be, but we'll power through, play the friendly against Al Idihad, and I'll show you the game against Vicenza to wrap it up before we kick off the season against newly promoted, I believe, Lecce, which will be fun as. So sit tight. I'll do some more stuff. Who's this? Vazier, he's a sports scientist. He's signing. I mean, that's the least exciting signing that could happen. Brilliant. Recommend a signing for me, and I'll just go grab him. Miriam, what a name, and what a head of hair. Look at that. Gorgeous. Sorry, got distracted. Back soon. And no sooner had I said back soon than I'm back, and I've got a gift for you. A literal gift. Gift, Sakar, uh, Sakar, Gif Sakane is what I'm going with. <laughs> oh, my word. He's in and he's great. We accept that. Uh, we don't have to register in the squad because he's under 22. And I'm excited about this guy. He could be awesome. I'm not even sure what I want to train him to do, to be honest. If I want to train him to play on these wings or if I want to train him to play up front. I think for now... Uh, not transfer status development. I can't do it yet because he's not officially here, but he will be in just a second, and it's going to be fantastic. I'm very excited. There we go. B minus has the potential to be a key player for the club. Fruto will welcome him in, and give him a pat, and send him on a language course so we can talk to everybody. That'll be handy, and we're not getting a wee suit. What a monster. You suck a wee suit. I didn't really want him anyway. It's fine. Here we are then, ready for Copa Italia Sean against Vicenza. Let me just flick this over because my football manager goes nuts. So Vicenza uh, from down in Serie B. We should be able to win. I've picked the squad. Uh, the board expect us to win. And after this game, got a little surprise for you in terms of the season preview. Very exciting. It wants me to change the squad. I don't think I will because I kind of want to have a... Uh, you know what? Yeah. Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, do I start Sikani? Hmm. Yeah, we'll start the youngster. Why not? So, a squad for the first game of our season in the Copa Italia. It's kind of a tradition now that we do this in the transfer special. Fruit to Lingol, uh, new boy Maturo, Mercandali, Walu, and Ratnik are our defenders. Adopo, uh, in behind Ranokia and Urbanski in midfield. Saidi and Garen Kowal are the wingers behind Sakane up front for now. And obviously we can make substitutions and stuff as we go. We've also brought a bunch of young'uns from the youth team up just for a laugh more than anything. 
Most of them probably won't play, but they're all available for the under 20s at the same time. Uh, we do over Chenza after what happened in our last match. Even players who weren't here and have got no idea what I'm talking about are very excited at the prospect. So get out there and fill your boots, lads. Here we go. There's nobody here for this game. Nobody cares about a match against Vicenza, which is a bit sad, I suppose. Later scores. Uh, we're not the only game playing, so that's reassuring. And off we go. We're playing football again, finally, after a marathon summer. We've rebuilt the team from the ground up, essentially. Not much left from last season. Not much at all. We're well on top as things stand, but we're not getting any highlights, which is a bit of a worry. But at least the tactic's working, and they're not getting a look in. Not a single shot. And we haven't hit the woodwork, so I take that as a positive. Uh, but now they've got a highlight and they're probably going to score. Yep, yeah, there we go. We've just been FM'd hardcore. I'm going to break the team because that is ridiculous. We've dominated the higher. We've built the tactic around trying to be more solid at the back. And then we go and concede a rubbish goal like this right before half time. Not good enough, gentlemen. Not good enough at all. We're going to get knocked out of Cope Italia by a bunch of minnows. And terrible. Sort it out. Admittedly, we're playing a weakened back line. This is not our first choice team. This is not how I intend to uh, have us line up for the remainder of the season. And we're probably going to make some changes. We'll say he's taking a knock, so it's really not worth chance to get from this point, is it? So let's just make some substitutions because nothing's happening. It affects us greatly. Uh, Lopato can come on and we'll swap you around for Garen Kowal. Evandro is coming on to try and make a difference. I'm going to throw on Antonio Gallo, my preferred left back. We'll throw on Pirozzi, my preferred right back. And I guess that will do for now. I'll swap these guys around in midfield because Ranokia hasn't shown up. Confirm those changes and I think we'll go attacking as well and just encourage the boys. It's 30 minutes to go. Something's got to give. We've got a corner. Velparto launches it in. There's a header for Mokandali. No joy. Abanski collects a loose ball. Runs it down. Finds Velparto. Adopo now. Running backwards. He's going the wrong direction. Whaling. Into Gallo. The new left back. And our captain, mind you. Uh, he's captain. Fruchtel is vice captain. Kowal with a shot from the top of the area. And the keeper saved. And that is our first attacking highlight in this match. And now we've got another one from the corner. Velparto floats it in. And it's Walu on the set piece. Lovely stuff. And we'll get the toots out because that. My PC speaker's on. That is our first goal of the season proper in competitive football. I'm not used to my speakers being on. I apologise. Incredibly unprofessional of me. But finally... We've got an advantage. Falpato again with the corner. So we're absolutely battering them on the side. Kowal now with the shot and scores. Darren Kowal's got his first goal for the club, everybody. Beautiful stuff. This is more like it. Now I just want to see a goal from Evandro. Falpato's doing well. From these corners. Granted, this is, you know, low level opposition. So we can't get too carried away. No matter how good the performance might wind up looking, take it all with a grain of salt. Several big chunky grains of salt, like rock salt is what we're talking about here. Not the finely ground table salt type deal. This is stuff that looks like uh, pop rocks and ridiculousness. Freaked got down for that goal. Gallo clears, finds Vanjo, plays a clever ball out of Opardo. He's got some space to run into. Plays it back in to Ranakia, into the area, shoots and forces the save from the keeper. That was a good passage of play. Nice quick transition. Explosive from the back, although what was going on at the back was very, very dodgy. <laughs> There's Vapato with the ball to Adopo. Bansky was there, gets a shot away, and it's another corner for us. We have just been hammering them down this right hand side, corner after corner after corner. Right, Abansky now into Wali, plays it back to Abansky. Runs it to the byline, crosses in, and that was weak source. I think it's taken a touch on the way in, or well, that would have had a little bit more zip on it. Uh, another change. I think I'm going to take off Ranakia. We've got one more sub we can make, and I'll throw on Vasic because I want him playing in this midfield role this season, and he can do advanced playmaker. So let's have him do that. 
Why not? And can I see our past map really quickly? No. Oh, here we go. We're going to concede the late equaliser because football manager is an absolute monster. Oh, Fructal had it covered. Yikes. But that was scary. Last season, we concede there 100%. That's a poor touch from Kuol, and he's given the ball away far too cheaply. And now they're coming down our left-hand side. And I think Fruchtel needed to make that, make that save. Might have been whizzing past that post. Well, that's a good, strong header from Mercandali. And it's gone out for a throw-in for Vicenza. We've got some tired boys now. We need to be on our toes. That guy's made his run way too early, and... Left Fructal with not a lot to do, but I think we're about to pick up a victory unless something goes horribly, horribly wrong in these next four minutes of time added on. But Vasic there with the fresh legs cutting in out. Volpato plays it across to Kowal. Abanski now running into the area. Crosses and Vandre's there. The new striker's got a goal. Questions of offside, possibly, but it looked all right to me. Granted, I am exceptionally biased. Everyone's running back to halfway. And the goal's been awarded. Vandre's off the mark. And that's quicker than Brunori was for us. First game of the season. Beautiful stuff. Now I'm excited because my 18-year-old Brazilian striker is already on the score sheet, coming off the bench. And that is beautiful. Timed his run to perfection. Look at that. This defender. What a wally. Playing us on side. Shouldn't be doing that, buddy. Should not be doing that at all. So we've done our usual thing of going a goal down early. But we've turned it around, picked up three goals, shared the workload around, and I'm pretty happy with that second half performance. They have done brilliantly to come back from that. Abansky, we've got a player on our hands there, apparently. Well done on making you your debut, sir. You played very well. And Gary Kowal with a 7.9. Again, we're playing lower league opposition. So we can't take too much from that. But there are, as I've said, promising signs. And I'm a bit excited. Teams are already playing in the league. We're not one of them. We play Lecce very, very soon. We get some money for winning in the first round of the Copa Italia. We've pleased the board because we've already met our goal in that competition. Uh, I've also set all of our bonuses to high in the hopes that extra money in their pockets motivates the team in the league to do better than we did last season and uh, that we can make a bit more progress in the cup because we got knocked out pretty early last year. But I don't really care about the cup. Just want to survive in Syria. The other aim, I guess, is having done all these transfers and I think built a pretty good team and strengthened the squad, is moving forward. If we can finish higher up the table, get a bit more cash in, build up the club reputation. Every summer, just make one or two big transfers in key positions and slowly, slowly work our way up towards those Champions League places. But we've got a long way to go from finishing, what, 14th, 13th, whatever it was. Now, as promised, bit of a surprise for you. What does a season preview say about us? Bearing in mind, we were predicted to finish 17th last season. This season, oh, it's a very different story. We, Palermo, given we're undertaking a project here at Palermo, are predicted to finish... 16th, 451 <laughs> to win the league. I didn't say it was huge progress, or maybe I did. I don't remember. I've got a memory like a goldfish. But we have made some progress, and I think we've got enough about us to finish above Monza, Parma, uh, some of these other clubs who have taken our cast-offs, players we didn't want. Medina are doomed because they've signed Moscone. <laughs> so they've got no chance. But that is going to do it for our transfer special. The season proper kicks off in the next episode where we will be facing the teams of Lecce and Udinese, who we owe a bit of a spanking to. And then, then the real work starts. Looks like the schedule's kind of settled and sensible, possibly because it's not a World Cup year, but it still makes no sense why we had such huge amounts of fixture congestion last season. Anyway, if you have enjoyed that, please smash the like button and the subscribe button if you have not already because it really, really helps. And if you could leave a comment, let me know what you think about all of these transfers, 
who uh, are the mistakes? Who shouldn't we have let go? Should we have sold Brunori or kept him and given him an, another season to try and redeem himself? I don't know, but we're all going to find out together and it's going to be a ton of fun. Until next time, I will see you next time. Say hi to your mum for me and be good. If you can't be good, don't get caught. <laughs>